Hi, my name is Henrik Mozart. I'm here to um, give you a quick overview of the role centers uh, within uh, AX 2009 and how they work and what you can use them for. So I'll just uh, go into to AX, um, where I've started up as a CEO in this particular case. Um, the role centers themselves uh, sits on the administration and user profiles where you have all the different role centers linked um, underneath here and each role center have uh, different capabilities. I'll go through a few uh, examples of those. It's very easy to uh, to attach users to, to the profile so you can just go into accounting managers and basically go in, add a user, choose from the different user IDs you have. Um, and basically add them like that. Uh, it's key here to understand whether that user profile is for all companies or whether it's just for select uh, numbers of com uh, companies. So basically meaning that uh, you can have different roles um, in different companies just like uh, with the standard security uh, system in here. Uh, I'll just go back here. Uh, basically, the uh, the role centers themselves is SharePoint. So therefore, you will notice that if you go into the web, um, which I'll just do now, and into role center here, um, shortcut it up, you'll see it's exactly the same KPIs that I will see and exactly the same page. It's basically SharePoint that is shown uh, within uh, the AX client. That means that in order for you to have um, the role centers working, you need to have SharePoint running uh, somewhere within the organization. That could be the free version of SharePoint, and it will show up like this. I will show you a few other examples of how uh, these um, uh, role centers look and feels like where we use uh, Enterprise Edition uh, functionality from SharePoint, uh, but I will, I will I'll get into that. Um, if we go in and we have a look here, uh, up here I have created a KPI list and there's a business overview list. What these does is they go in and look at some of the standard cubes that are within AX. So what I will do is I'll probably just go in here and add uh, a KPI. Up comes all the standard cubes that are within AX, uh, created down at analysis services. I might just go and choose a general ledger cube here. I might say I want to have uh, total expenses in, uh, split that up by different um, aging periods, uh, account descriptions, company, department, cost center. You know, uh, I might just choose department here. I'll come back to this form in a moment uh, in regards to report links and and uh, and display name. We just put it like this, and what you see total expenses now appears. Because I split it in by different departments, I can go in and drill in by the different departments. Now the idea with these parts here is that they just give you a quick overview. So what you might have is that you might actually have uh, somewhere in your organization, you might have detailed reports that you want to link into these. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So what I will do is I'll just go back here into my, into my web. And up here under, um, I have my report manager website here. So this is something that maybe an admin person uh, will do. But just want to show you how easy it is to actually do this. Okay, I have my dynamics reports here. And on the dynamics reports, uh, I will have uh, like a um, ledger profit uh, analysis as an example. So when you know where your uh, SQL reporting service reports are, all I'm going to do is go properties and basically just copy and paste this link uh, that sits here. So control C on that and then basically uh, within my AX I can now go up to I might say gross profit margin here. So I've got manage KPI, choose my gross profit margin, edit and then report link simply paste what I had in there. And what you will notice now this is uh, turned blue and I can click on it and it now drills into a report. This report is probably not the, the right report for uh, for this example but just shows you how you can uh, link uh, reports in. Reports doesn't have to necessarily be C reporting services report. So if I go back uh, to my SharePoint site here um, and just go home. I have here on the sales reports, as an example, I have opportunity data. And if I just quickly open that up, uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet that shows you um, opportunities. It's actually also linked into the same analysis services cubes. Again, 
I can just go in, properties on it, select the entire link like that and go back into AX here and I might just uh, choose cost of goods sold, doesn't matter which one we're doing it for. Obviously you would choose, uh, choose a report that makes sense for that, click OK to that. And now instead of opening up uh, a single report, so report, I just open up an Excel spreadsheet. It could be a Word document, it could be a PDF, there's no limit to what it is, it's basically just a URL uh, that uh, is added in there. This particular role center um, is constructed via financial KPIs, custom KPIs, uh, production KPIs, but because it's SharePoint, you can actually add any other component uh, uh, that you wish to do that, uh, in here. I'll show you that in, in, in a different example. What I have done here is just to show uh, two other examples uh, of um, role centers. Uh, I log in as Phyllis here, you can see Phyllis Role Center sees in, in purchasing. She looks at invoices uh, past due, uh, invoices due today, etc., etc. And the, uh, basically, these are called queues. And I'll show you how we add uh, queues to to the dashboard. She also gets from her work list, you know, which uh, project purchase uh, that she needs to approve, uh, timesheets, etc. So. Basically, the role centers give information to the user about what he or she does in her uh, work uh, or should be concentrating on in, in her work. Again, my, uh, I have some report links here as well that we can that we can link into. If I just quickly show you uh, Kevin as well, he's sales manager. Kevin, I've added in uh, the Excel spreadsheet here. This requires, in order for you to have Excel running uh, um, like this in your role center, that does require the Enterprise Edition of uh, SharePoint uh, to do so. Um, so further down on this particular list, we are utilizing what is called Performance Point Services, which comes with SharePoint, and that allows you to, on the graphs themselves here, start drilling uh, into um, the detailed uh, information just straight uh, within. So this is now a fully, um, um, how should I put it, this is now fully enab um, enabled, web enabled, drill down uh, straight into where you can do your analysis and slicing and dicing as, as you see fit uh, uh, in here. In, in fact you can even go and say show details and it will give you the details straight. So this is you know basically a proper uh, web drill in uh, from Microsoft that sits in, in, in SharePoint in this particular case. I just thought it's very important that you that if uh, any of you have the VPC from uh, Microsoft that you understand that this is an enterprise uh, requirement in here. Okay, now one of the things that uh, Kevin doesn't see, he doesn't see which opportunities is, is win and loss and he might want to have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm, I'm going to go in and show you how you create a queue and basically add content into uh, the role uh, into the role center. So what I will do is I'm going to opportunities here, and I will see some opportunities. So what I will do is that I might actually just go in and say I'm only uh, interested in those who are active. So filter by this selection, so that's active now and I only want to see uh, those with a probability of above 50%. So what I might just do is just create a filter here and go in and say 50% and now I have a, a list of that. What I can do is I can now go up and say save as a queue. So queue ID, I have to give it a name so you can see the red squiggly line means it's mandatory. So I just go call this above uh, 50%. And the caption, which is basically what it's called, like that. In here, I have a count of minimum max. So, so obviously, if you have, this is where you and your organization will understand what's the maximum that you want to have and what's the minimum that you normally have. You use that by doing these thresholds. Basically, what that does, it basically uh, determines whether the paper stack comes up with a yellow exclamation mark or red exclamation mark about when you're over and, uh, and above certain fields. I just leave this as none in this particular uh, case. Is it for me only or is it for everybody or is it for a specific profile? I'll just say this is for everybody in this particular case and click OK to that. What I can do now 
in my role center is I can go back and say personalize this page again this is SharePoint so I will add a web part over here on my left side or right side and all my SharePoint content obviously as an end user you might actually not have access to this so you might have your admin people to set this up so I'm going in and say I'm adding a queue you can see it's a Dynamics, uh, Microsoft Dynamics web part, so it's not a standard um, SharePoint part, it's, it comes with, with AX. And all I have to do now is just basically edit this part. Queues have uh, one limit and, and one limit only, is that you can only show six queues at a time. And they're all, always named Q1 to Q6, so I'm just going Q1, what's the view that I want to see, and here comes my above 50% view. And I'll just say the caption automatically comes in. I can still overwrite the threshold if I want to, but I just leave this as it is and click. Uh, and I'll just go with this is uh, CRM ops like that. Okay. And now you will see exit uh, edit mode. Now you can see I've added a queue up here above 50%. It has a dollar value. Now what does it do? It actually does, when I click on it, it will automatically open up that form uh, within AX. As opportunities, in this particular case, comes in and the probability is set to over 50% and they're active, the, uh, um, the paper stack will, will, will change. So what I might just do is uh, I'll go in here and just go in, remove filter sort, in this particular case, and I will change this one here to a probability, um, or I could change this to a to a different probability, and um, it, it you know it will change in in the filter in there. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to to talk about in um, in the role centers. So the role centers again, just to recaption, is that you have under administration user profiles. You have all the different role centers that are available for you in here, from accountant, C, uh, CEO, payroll, environmental, uh, etc. Um, and you can just attach people. So Kevin now is the sales manager. I might actually just say that I'll just quickly change him to um, environmental. So I go in here like this: users, add user, Kevin. The moment that I attach Kevin he will be removed from the sales manager role and attached to the environmental role you can't be part of, of two roles so you'll see that when I now refresh my my page here loading role centers go yes to that and now comes my environmental energy consumption greenhouse gas emission etc etc okay so that will conclude uh, my uh, presentation uh, in this uh, around role centers hope you will enjoy them thank you very much